Nick, let's flick the switch. You're a journalist, you're, you're a writer. This uh, emerging technology of, uh, of artificial intelligence, uh, specifically ChatGPT. Now, if you think you can just ban ChatGPT and move on to something else, it's not like that. Um, just like you can put something into Google that will, will give you an answer, uh, may or may not be right, but it'll give you certainly a response. ChatGPT, you put something in, you know, tell me all about the French Revolution, and it will write you an essay that will be different than the next time you ask and the next time you ask. So very difficult for a teacher to say that this is a computer-generated essay. We're getting to the point with, with technology and automation taking away, uh, you know, blue-collar jobs and now the risk that AI through the universities are going to take these white-collar jobs and we're going to end up with a whole class or, or generation of Australians who don't have critical thinking skills. Now, that's mm. got to be a concern, mm. Nick. It, it has, and look, I try. It's just pretty impressive technology. I, I wrote a column about it earlier in the year, at the start of the year, to say that I feared that my own job as a, as a journalist, as a columnist, could be replaced because you can feed in, you know, it can spew out pretty good stuff, uh, even to the point where I put in one of, ta when a, you know, John Howard's famous speech, we will decide to come to this country and so forth. I, I asked it to put that in Shakespeare's English. It did a very, very good job of it. So we are in an entirely different world now. Uh, and I, I think it, it's not, it, you know, it will, uh, for lazy people, discourage critical thinking and discourage their own thought. And so you raise the question, what happens in universities and colleges? I think it's quite simple, really. They just go back to, you know, exam rooms. Here's your piece of paper and your pencil. You've got an hour and a half, you know. You sit there. I don't see why you can really test somebody anyway if they've got access to a computer uh, of any kind. You know, creative... To, to know what people really know and really learn, you've just got to put them in a room and give them a blank sheet of paper and a pencil, I think. What do you think, John? Well, I, I agree with Nick. Uh, I think that the other great challenge we've got is that there is an international race to develop this technology. There are some people who say the Chinese have outstripped the Americans and the West, that they're further advanced still than we are. Uh, and that is a real concern. It's a real concern because I just don't know how you ever put a legal framework around this, some sort of um, construct that says there are some areas where we just won't go to because of their potential for massive evil. If this intelligence continues to build up at this race, you'll have some genius somewhere who'll say, well, go forth and solve the climate change problem or whatever, and they'll do it in a way that destroys the whole of humanity. I mean, the, tech, the power of this stuff, as Nick has alluded to, is astonishing. Jordan Peterson told me he asked... Uh, one of these chat box things to write an essay in his own style uh, around the 12 rules for life, uh, I think, or his latest book, he said he could not fault the fact that it was his own language. And so this is, I think, the, the thing we need to think about now is how on earth do we put some boundaries around this? Obviously, you know, you can go back to pen and paper for university exams, but it goes a long way further than that. Artificial intelligence may very well be an incredible danger to us militarily, strategically, environmentally. You're not wrong. I'll leave it there, gentlemen. Uh, next week, I'm going to ask you for some recommendations of what you're listening to, what you're reading, because uh, my viewers often ask what they can delve into just to um, start a whole new conversation.